everybody, this is Chuck, and uh, thanks for stopping by the channel. I uh, got a little machining for you today, and uh, we're going to be starting to fabricate this. It's going to be a two part video, um, but uh, this is part one, and I hope you enjoy it. Well, I thought I'd do a little uh, machining. Just got done cleaning my shop, and so. Uh, this is a inexpensive chuck. It's really a wood lathe chuck uh, that I had picked up for jaw that I had adapted some time ago for live centers. Morse Taper 2 and a Morse Taper 3 that I could use on either one of my lathes. Well, with that, I came up with this little idea. I 3D printed the piece and I have this smaller chuck. This chuck's only three, it's a little three inch chuck that will sit on a mount and this mount will attach to the live centers. So now I have a, a smaller chuck that can also rotate. With that, I ended up putting flats on it so that I could actually turn it on the uh, mill or on the mill this way and use it to um, locate flats. So just kind of a, a harebrained project. I also 3D printed a little slot in here where I could do hold downs. Um, I may do that and mill those in. I'll have to decide and uh, recess the screws in the back. Got a pocket here. So, I have a little drawing that I did. Give me my dimensions and stuff. And uh, we'll uh, get it set up and get started. I have this uh, chunk of steel here that is uh, four and an eighth in diameter by nine and a quarter. So we'll uh, go ahead and get this on the, uh, the bandsaw cut me off a piece and then uh, go ahead and get it over to the lathe. We'll let you follow along as I go. Okay, to get the piece, uh, my drawing says it's uh, 1 inch 360 and my uh, 3D print here is uh, 1 inch 345 so I think I'm just going to make an uh, inch and a half piece. And I can always uh, machine it down. Just a quick thought as I pick this up. It's a mystery metal. Um, could be steel, could be cast iron. I got it from the uh, shop that was, uh, he was making trains. Uh, this might have been the blank that he was uh, d using for his wheels. So it's possibly it's cast. We'll find out. Due to the angle, of the weight, I had to hold the uh, saw up for the beginning of the cut. And with that said, I'm kind of really thinking this is cast iron because it was making the cut relatively quick. I've got it going slow right now to finish it by, by hydraulic. But uh, we'll find out more, but I'm pretty sure this is a piece of cast iron. Keep on, uh, keep on cutting here. Sorry for the handheld. So just for the fun of it, I wanted to see how flat my saw cut. It didn't feel good because I was hand feeding it and my saw likes to start slow and get the blade fully engaged and it really cuts good. But let's see, I got the indicator on zero. There's 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60, 60 thou. I'll take that for kind of a half handheld. 
on onward and upward here we keep going so I've got the blank in the uh, closing here the four jaw chuck happened to be on here so I decided just to use it uh, just threw it in here and uh, there's a 30 it's it's got about if we go on that jaw 35 this jaw 34 this jaw 32 and this jaw 37 35 so close enough for what I'm doing here I'm gonna face it pop the hole in it for the uh, thread thread it and then uh, from there we'll um, counter bore and then put it on a, a mandrel to uh, clean up the outside Looks like it's steel. We're actually getting chips off of it. This uh, 30 thousandths cut to uh, clean up the face. So that's interesting. Okay, we'll bring you back. The tap, the tap drill for a three-quarter, no, excuse me, a, uh, yeah, three-quarter sixteen is a uh, 45 60 force. That's for a 50% uh, thread. I don't have a 45 60 force, so we'll punch with an 11 sixteenths and then uh, come back with a boring bar to get it. So I made one pass with the boring bar and my bore right now with using a gauge pin is 693 and my target is 703. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out 7 thou and check it again and then we'll hit it for the final number. Well, we should be hitting 699. 699 or 700. There's 700. 700 will almost try to start. And 699 is in. Double check, looked at the pins to make sure they weren't in the wrong place. So we'll take another three and should be good. One, two, three. Close enough. It's just to cut a thread. I don't know if that'll show up or not. 704 gauge pin. Well, will not go. 703 gauge pin. I hit it right on the 
right on the nut. Not bad, Charlie. Okay. Uh, next, we'll tap it. And then there's a counter bore. Uh, maybe the counter bore after. Um, and then get it on a mandrel. Okay, first we got a little countersink on that hole. Yeah, a little more, what the hell. As you can notice, this side I didn't clean up all the way, but there's steps in the uh, unit, so this side will get steps, so it doesn't matter. Alright, now I'm tapping. Okay, the goal here is to power tap this. Let's see what happens. Got it loaded up with uh, tap magic. And we're going to give it hell, see what she does. Whatever this steel is, I'm liking it. There's my uh, Keith Fenner copy. Well, if you've watched my videos, you know how loud my 10 E is. So I just wanted to show you how it's set up between centers. And uh, first thing we'll be is just roughing the uh, major OD. And then uh, we'll move on from there. So you don't need to watch uh, standard turning to get it started. Well, here's the setup, but it's a fail. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. It's just chattering like a son of a gun. And uh, I've tried multiple inserts, multiple speeds, multiple feeds, and uh, it's just getting the chatter. Actually, my very first cleanup pass, which didn't clean it up, was nice. After that, it's been ugly. So, I think I've got to, uh, I think this is just too flimsy. A lot, lot of, you can feel the movement. Um, so, I'm going to have to uh, go ahead and take it off that, machine one side, flip it and machine the other, and do it that way. We'll get there though. I hope. Well, I think you just saw the failure on the mandrel. And so I just made a stub arbor for it. I did do a video on this some time ago. Basically, you turn a stub that is the same diameter or, or fits the diameter of your hole, so in my case it was 0.701 and then you divide 701 by 12 and that gives you the size of the pin that needs to go in there after you cut a flat. So I had to cut a 50, 58 thousandths flat on the stub arbor and then you put the drill bit or you put the spacer in there which I'm using a number drill because that's the size it had to be I was trying to get some welding rod to fit, but it didn't fit. And uh, I've already uh, tested it right here, and you'll see it. We're going to cut, uh, we'll go with a 40 thousandths cut right now, where I wasn't getting anything earlier. So 40 thou is uh, 20 a side. So a little bit of noise. Here we go. throwing chips at me like crazy.
okay, you don't need to be watch me turn anymore. But uh, that little arbor is working perfect. Currently taking a hundred thousandths a pass, so fifty thousandths a side. Keep going, got to get that, that whip out of there. Well, I had set uh, my digital for 3 inch 300 thou and it moved to 299999 and ended up with, uh, I don't know if this will focus or not. It's interesting using a bigger mic when you haven't used one in a long time, but anyway. I'm at uh, one thou under three inches three hundred. Not bad. So we'll switch to that three inches three hundred on the digital and keep going. We're going down to uh, three inch one forty. Well, this almost got ugly. Uh, you can't daydream while you're running a lathe, but I'm still okay. I had left enough meat there. And uh, I don't actually know what I did to create this, other than it made me jump out of my shoes. But uh, we'll continue on. You're not watching me just do this turning. I know you'd probably enjoy to watch another crash, but no, no. So we'll continue on. Okay, well, the unit's done. And uh, it should just turn to come off the arbor. We will... Uh, Give it a go and see what it does here. Pin came out that easy. Put it back in the drill stand before I lose it. And off it comes. Now, there is a damage to the thread in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'll just run the tap back through and that shouldn't be a problem. So this uh, this worked out really well. You can see, possibly you can see, when I had my little accidente, the, actually the uh, mandrel slid in the uh, chuck. I didn't have the chuck that tight, I guess. Because um, this blue mark was over here. So she spun on me. But all's well that ends well, right? All right, now it's off to the mill and the rotary table. Just a quick check while we're here. That's the chuck that's supposed to sit on it and just what just what the doctor ordered. Flip the part around in the lathe and uh, just bored it to a one inch counter bore one inch deep. This is a one inch uh, gauge pin. And uh, hit it nice. So now I can go on to the mill. So I think this is going to be the end of part one. And uh, you'll have to be back and catch part two where I do the uh, finish work on the mill. Thanks for uh, stopping by the channel. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, machining video, um, and uh, we'll continue on.